Hello everyone, welcome to our special pick four. This is week number three. I'm Josh Brown with Chad Dale. This pick four will cover races nine and 10 from Belmont Park. And of course, the first two from Penn National. Quickly, Chad, let's review what happened last week. If you were watching our show, we gave out the winning pick four for $12 with only a handful of selections. We had an even money. We had two second favorites and then we had a seven to one. And for only 50 cents, it paid 200 bucks. Excellent return on that, excellent return. Uh and especially when you uh, calculate the $2 win parlay, that was only $498. If you played the $2 pick four, you got $800 back. So it wasn't bad. I know Andy Serling wasn't a big fan of the pick four sequence. We took it down. Here so, at Penn National, we sure did. Absolutely. So Andy didn't like the uh, pick four last week. I'm going to steal his idea for this week. This is a very tough pick four. I think it's going to pay well. There's not a ton of horses, but it's a very complicated pick four sequence. So I'll start it off if you don't mind this week. Let's do it. But before we do that, I will have you discuss our Thursday pick four and what our fans have to look for. It's a special pick four linking Belmont's final two races and Penn National's first two races. We also have a reduced takeout of 15%. It's a 50 cent minimum wager. Starts with the Belmont's next to last race, usually the eighth or the ninth. Today will be the ninth and the 10th race. Please note this is a separate wager from Belmont's regular card. When wagering, please ask to see the Belmont Pen Pick Four. And that's gonna go every Thursday through October the 24th. So let's dive right on in into the third week of the Belmont Pen Pick Four. Race nine from Belmont Park's the first leg. Six furlongs is the distance, and this is for claimers at $35,000. This race here, my top selection is the 1A and 1 entry. Number 1A is Tricky Slam. I like the fact that this horse was on the turf last time out. Didn't do too bad, but going down to the main track now, if you throw out the last two races, the horse didn't do too bad at Aqueduct bumps up in class. I think that's a confident hike and I really like the two for one price here. I think race nine at Belmont, which is the first leg, there's just an overwhelming amount of pace. I think the one is gonna be the rabbit for the 1A and I also like the five. And in this race here, the number five horse is going to try to stalk from off the pace and try to pass everybody. Again, six furlongs is a short distance. So the pace angle is the 1A and the five. Chad, who do you like in the first leg? I definitely don't like the five. If it was muddy, I would go with the five right away. The okay. horse that I like is coming off 130 days off. That is number seven, Clawback. He's averaging 17,000 per start. Throw out his last two races, they were both stake races. Like I said earlier, he's been off for 130 days. My only question is, will he be tight enough to go three quarters of a mile? My second choice is the two horse. With that, you also get the 2B. He's picking up a bug allowance. He's five to eight pounds lighter than everybody else, but he also has been off over 90 days. So with that being said, Rodriguez wins at a, pay, at a clip of 16% with horses off 90 days or more. And my third choice is the one, your rabbit. I like the one over the 1A, but you'll be getting both. He was claimed for 50,000 earlier in February. Since then, he's been claimed three times. He's 60% of the money in 2013, and Jacobson is 26% win percentage, first off the claim. The only, the, I do have a question about your seven horse. I, bar none, the seven is the one to beat on paper. Don't you think the workout tab's a little slow for number seven clawback? I do agree. He very well could be the New England Patriots that went 18 and 0, and just didn't get it done in the Super Bowl. Well, I hope this is the case because I left him out. Chad has him in. Let's dive on into a very tough second leg, which is race 10. I will let Chad lead this one off because it's such a complicated race. Race 10, it's a tricky one here. I have seven horses in race 10. I have the one, the two, the four, the five, the seven, the nine, and the 10. They're all maidens. I don't have much more to say about it. You know, this it's is so a tough wide race. Open. You know, I. I have all kinds of highlighters here. I got Staples loves me because I mean, I'm just all over the place. I, here's the horses I pitched. I don't like the one. Yeah, the horse has some decent races. The horse is just not bred for the turf. The three horse, the trainer's only 3% for two year olds. As the tractor guy says, hi, I can't take him. I went to the back page, number 11, Nin Pin. This jockey has never hit the board yet at the Belmont meet, even though the horse two starts back, had a great race at Churchill Downs. Uh, in this particular race, I took eight horses. I'm going with the two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. This is a very tough second leg in race 10, and that's basically all I have to say. Let's dive on into the third leg, which starts at Penn National. Five and a half furlongs is the trip. My top selections here on my 
cheap ticket are the numbers one, four, and five. We'll start with number one, Spring Dance. Last two races, this horse was on a rain affected track over at Parks Racing. This horse is five for six in the money. I think if this horse catches a fast track, which that is in the forecast for tomorrow, I think this horse is going to try to pop. Goes a little bit shorter. I like the one spring dance. Number four is Romantic Cuvee. One win, one second out of two places here at Penn National. Tried its hand at Timonium last time out. Other than that, the horse can stalk the pace and try to rally. And there's a lot of speed in this particular race as well. Third, I went to number five, Busted Again. This one has a little bit of Gulfstream Park and Mammoth back class. Does have five seconds out of nine starts. That's a little bit of a concern, but the horse has been bet the last three times and has not won. Chad? I also like your one and your five, but my top selection is going to be the three horse, Le Gray Zulena. Once again, I'm going with another horse that's been off over 90 days for Tim Kreiser, but Kreiser is winning at 25% with horses off 60 days or more. He's got three wins and three seconds in his last six starts. He's five of seven in the money at Penn National. He picks up the leading rider here at Penn National with David Cora. My second selection was the one, like you said, and my third selection is the five. You know, I want to talk about the three for just a second here. Uh, if we read between the lines, it looks like the three horse wants more of a wet track. The horse has had six wins, two seconds out of eight starts. Speed rating wise, I think the three, even though he's one of my fastest horses, I think the three horse wants a wet surface. Agree, disagree, don't really care. I didn't see any reading between the lines. Well, that I didn't. well, it was a good book. I bought it at yeah. Barnes & Noble the other night, uh, and it told me to pitch the three. So we'll see what happens. Fourth and final leg, as I look manly and pink, Chad Dale says. This is the fourth and final leg, which is race two at Penn National at five and one half furlongs. So I will let, uh, I'll kick it off, actually. Um, five and eight are my top selections here. I'm going to go with the five Brum Brum Boy. This is one horse that either likes to win or doesn't like to win based on the buyer speed figures is seven for nine in the money out of nine lifetime starts as mentioned. Uh, that's my top selection. The, actually, my top horse is the eight. I don't even know how to say the name. I'm not Xander? calling this race. I don't know. I'm not announcing this race, so I'm just going to say number eight. Oh, okay. The horse concerns me because of the suspect drop. Why would you take a horse for 25,000 and sell him for 10 when he was in a $100,000 stakes race at Presque Isle Downs? Do you have an opinion about that sus uh, suspect drop? I agree, he is my top selection too, but I believe Hugh McMahon's bringing him in here to drop him and lose him to be honest with you. Okay. Steel race, he's dropping in class like you said. Hugh McMahon has been winning at 24% with horses that are off more than 30 days. My second selection is Brum Brum Boy. Since Kravitz has claimed him, he is three for four with two wins. Throw out his last race. He was at an entry level allowance, just did not belong there, didn't look comfortable at all. And he's picking up Matthew Rispoli. Matthew Rispoli's back on him for this time around. And my last selection is the number one. John Locke, uh, first off the claim, he's winning at 13% clip. He's doing very well. He's cutting back in distance this time to five and a half, which I think will really help this cold out. And he picks up Dana Whitney, who's back on. Should be great there at the end of the race. All right, well, that's Chad's selections. And quickly, we will go over our tickets here. My cheap play for $24 in the first leg, it's 1A and 5. In the second leg, it's numbers 2, 4, 5, and 9. The third leg will be 1, 4, and 5. And the final leg will be 5 and 8. If you want to splurge, which I suggest you do on this particular pick four, the expensive ticket is 1A5 with the 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Third leg is the one, three, four, five, and the final leg is two, five, eight. Chad? Wow, you're breaking the piggy bank today, aren't you? Yep, absolutely. My, uh, my smaller ticket, I'm gonna key the seven horse, the one that Josh threw out earlier. He's gonna be my key in the ninth race at Belmont. In race number 10, I'm gonna have the five, nine, and 10. At the first race at Penn National, I'm gonna select three, one, and five. And in the last leg, I'm gonna do the one, five, and eight. With my big ticket, I'm gonna have in the first leg, the seven, the two, and the one. And then that maiden, that tough maiden race, I'm going to do the one, two, four, five, seven, nine, and ten. And then in the first leg at Penn, I'm going to do the one, three, and five. And in the last leg, once again, one, five, and eight. And as Josh Brown once said, the horses either want to win or they don't want to win. It's very I mean, true. It's very true, and we'll see what happens on this tough pick four. Well, that wraps up week three. Special thank you to everybody watching out there. So on behalf of Josh, yes, it only took three takes for me this time, and my partner in crime, Chad. I'm always fashionably late, Dale. Thank you for watching the third week of the Belmont Penn National Pick 4. Good luck.